Library Leadership Podcast is brought to you by Innovative. Focused on accelerating libraries' impact on the world, Innovative helps spark connections between libraries and their communities. With a comprehensive portfolio of solutions for libraries worldwide, Innovative technology makes resources accessible to patrons near and far. Learn more at www.iii.com slash podcast. This is Adrienne Herrick-Juarez. You're listening to Library Leadership Podcast, where we talk about libraries and leadership and speak with guests who share their ideas, innovations, and strategic insights in the profession. Want to be an ideal library leader or employee? Today's guests offer insights into just what that looks like. Dr. Anthony Chow, Associate Professor at the University of North Carolina, Greensboro, and Ashley Conti, Librarian at the Charlotte Mecklenburg Public Library, share research that examines what we can all do to up our game as both leaders and employees. You won't want to miss it. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the show, Dr. Chow and Ashley. Thank you so much, Adrian. We really appreciate the opportunity to share our research with you. Yes, thank you for having us. Oh, I appreciate it. And thank you for talking with me today, because we're going to discuss the ideal qualities of library leaders and employees, which is so interesting. First of all, how did the work on this topic come about, and why is it important? Adrian, I've been working on this for over 20 years. So as a faculty member teaching at the graduate level, um, I teach the core class in library leadership and management. So certainly one of the things we want to make sure is that what we're teaching our students is not only valid but also contemporary. So I think one of the reasons why I wanted to work on that article is to make sure that what we were teaching our students was spot on. This work that Dr. Chow and I are doing now is actually an extension of a 2013 article that he actually wrote called The Ideal Qualities and Tasks of Library Leaders. So like he said, we're just keeping the research current um, because it's important to keep assessing these skills since the field is ever-changing. Libraries are changing rapidly. Some leadership skills are specific to a given environment. Yet your work shows that there's a core set of qualities for successful library leaders. What are these? That's a good question, Adrian. We like to break it up really into two parts, uh, leadership and management. So what we found uh, leaders, the core principles are empathy, vision, flexibility, and communication. And that was really based on our 2013 work. And we'll talk about uh, our new findings in just a second. And for managers, we found that uh, really overseeing kind of the the organization in terms of operational procedures, being task-focused, and being approachable uh, were the criteria or variables that were most spoken of, uh, both uh, by leaders and managers and also their employees. The interviews and the surveys that we found, while what Dr. Chow said, empathy, vision, flexibility, and communication were core, um, we heard a lot of, of vision and communication, specifically this go-around. So a lot of vision and communication. And this comes from your new work. Do you want to talk about the new work that you've been doing? Yes, absolutely. So where the 2013 work uh, was really uh, a deep content analysis of transcripts from different types of library leaders. What we decided to do this time, uh, uh, one, update the work uh, uh, seven years apart, uh, was to really look at it from a 360-degree hang of view. So that meant um, talking to leaders and managers about uh, what they believe the ideal qualities are, uh, and then also asking them about the ideal qualities of employees. And then we also then uh, asked their employees the same questions. And so uh, we're really happy with this uh, this work, and, and Ashley did a great job with uh, doing a lot of the in-the-field data collection, and I think uh, our findings are pretty valid because uh, they really are coming from every every perspective. Can you talk about what the research looked like and how you got involved with this? It basically, um, what we did is we uh, looked at, uh, we did interviews with uh, select leaders uh, across, the, across the state in different areas. Uh, and then uh, we took those uh, responses and created a survey uh, that then went out to additional library leaders and managers and employees. And the primary findings, uh, le leaders focus, again, more outwards. Uh, they're focusing on more creating the vision, uh, motivating staff, and driving the organization forward, whereas managers 
uh, more discreetly are, again, looking at operational procedures, looking inward to make sure uh, that uh, they're being task-focused and also uh, interacting and being approachable uh, with the staff. Ashley? Yeah, so the interviews were just with library leaders in the field and all different types of libraries. Um, So we did want to give the employees in all types of libraries a chance to get a word in as well about what they look for from their leaders and and even what they look for from their coworkers. So like Dr. Shrow said, we took what we found in those interviews and then we turned it into a survey um, where we gave the opportunity for a large amount of library employees to to rate and comment on these topics. Um, And we found that it did kind of work with what the interview answer said. So they were stating the same things for leaders and managers and for their coworkers that the leaders and managers were saying. So it all wrapped in very nicely in that 360 degree view. So we all know a successful organization is comprised of both effective leaders and effective employees. What does your study tell us about the employees' side of things? Well, that's a, a good question. I think employees are uh, what we actually found, I think, building on what uh, Ashley said, is that there was actually some consistency as far as uh, what uh, each group thought of one another. Uh, but actually, Ashley, if you want to report out on what kind of the employees uh, talked about uh, in, as far as both what they're looking for uh, in leaders uh, as well as what they're looking for in coworkers, that would be great. Yeah, so what we heard from from leaders is that when they're looking for library employees, when they classify an excellent library employee, there are four qualities that were mentioned consistently. Um, that is showing initiative, uh, being self-motivated, being passionate about the work, and demonstrating a willingness to learn new skills. Um, So not only did leaders look for these skills in employees, but employees also wanted these skills in their coworkers. Um, And we also found that a lot of the desirable qualities for excellent leaders and managers are also desirable for excellent employees, Um, because obviously the employees of today are going to be the leaders of of tomorrow. Um, And also there's this mentality of you can really be a leader no matter your position in, in the library or the information organization, as long as you demonstrate those qualities. Fantastic. So you interviewed both leaders? and employees, you got their takes, and then you combined the work into creating a really comprehensive picture about the qualities that we can all exhibit to make the libraries the best they can be. What are the implications of all these findings? I think, Adrian, uh, as you well know, the, the leader really is kind of the heart and soul of the organization, in particular the, the culture. Uh, and so uh, one of the reasons why I really love teaching leadership and management is because uh, that's such a pivotal role. And so the implications, I think, is uh, good research uh, kind of lays a framework in which to uh, help with the future, uh, future performance. And so we think, we, we hope that this research will give uh, both current leaders and managers um, a leg up in terms of uh, comparing and contrasting their own style. Uh, and then same thing for employees. And then, as Ashley uh, well said, uh, the current students and uh, employees of today are the future leaders and managers of tomorrow. And so we, we hope that the research will give everyone a leg up and a chance to accomplish, uh, you know, uh, better leadership and management for the, for the benefit of all. Absolutely. Yeah. We are hoping that, you know, that will trickle down and just create an overall better work environment, which then leads to a better library experience for all patrons. And at the end of the day, we do all want to provide library patrons, you know, the best service possible. Um, So that's definitely a way to do it, you know, culture and work environment for sure. And and I I wanted to add to um, Adrian, as you know, a fair majority of leaders and managers uh, are not given a whole lot of training, right? They end up being given the keys to the kingdom uh, and not really being sure on what to do. So we we hope that this article uh, will be a very clear uh, uh, roadmap for people that might find themselves in that situation. The article is very clear, gives specific qualities that we can strive for. I was wondering, did anything surprise you about the research as you did this? Uh, I think one would be the consistency. Uh, one of the things that we, we thought of when we were, we were thinking about the research design is, I wonder if the, what the employees are going to say they want, uh, their leaders and managers are going to differ 
widely. Uh, and I think that uh, there's a saying in research uh, it's called redundancy. When you see redundancy, uh, you know that you've hit a degree of validity and reliability. So I think, honestly, one of the biggest surprises was the consistency uh, that we saw uh, from all sides. So that's why we like to call it 360 degrees or data triangulation. Uh, I guess what it tells us is that uh, that we have a, a great deal of confidence that these findings are pretty valid, at least in North Carolina, right? Ashley? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that did surprise me as well. Uh, I guess one of the major things that surprised me is how much of an overlap there is in terms of qualities between leaders and managers and then the employees as well, and that an employee can very much take on those traits that we really associate with leaders and, and managers, things like, you know, creating a vision, motivating others. Um, typically, that's thought of as, oh, well, the leader will will do that. Um, but what we found was that's also very much a role that an employee can take on, so and that leaders look for in employees as well. Um, so that was also surprising and a good surprise. <laughs> yeah, and I wanted to add, Ashley, too, that um, when we teach uh, our students, that's always one of the fundamental questions is, you know, how do we become successful? And, again, I think these findings, especially when it comes straight from uh, leaders and managers uh, can, can really, again, serve as a, almost a checklist of, well, if you want to be successful, uh, then look at these uh, qualities and emulate them. I think people are definitely going to want to look at your findings. If they do, where should they go to find these? Well, we're going to hope to be accepted. We haven't submitted yet to the uh, Journal of Library Management uh, of LAMA, uh, which is the Leadership and Management Division for ALA. So that. They, they published the 2013 article, and uh, we believe that uh, they're going to publish the follow-up as well. Very good. We will watch for that. Anything else you'd like to share? Just that libraries evolve all the time, and that I expect what's required of library leaders will also evolve with it, uh, which just makes this topic so important to regularly talk about and evaluate through work like what we're doing in research and also through conversation. So podcasts like this certainly help keep the important conversation going. Yeah, it's well, well put, Ashley. And I think uh, the word I would use is agile and versatile. So I think that uh, what we're finding with the ideal qualities that we've identified is that uh, if practiced, um, it can help move the organization forward in a rapidly changing environment. And I think that, uh, again, as you well know, Adrian, uh, things are changing and are going to continue to change, and it's, it's uh, critical uh, that these ideal qualities are in place so that uh, 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 leaders are asking the right questions, uh, employees are uh, uh, letting the leaders know uh, what might need to change, and that communication uh, is, is, uh, is, is, is critical. They certainly are changing fast. And these core qualities of those of us who run libraries, who operate libraries, can really help us springboard into the future. Do we want to sum those up? Can you remind me, as we start to wrap up the show, what were the skills of the leaders, the managers, and the employees? Sure. Yeah, I think uh, the, what we like to do with, again, leaders and managers is leaders look outwards, managers look inwards, uh, leaders, uh, what we found, again, vision, um, the ability to motivate staff uh, and lead the organization forward. So those three really are critical. And then for managers, uh, the, the having and following operational procedures, that's really a level of consistency there, uh, being task-focused, and then always being approachable to staff. So those three uh, for managers. And Ashley, you want to finish up with the employees? Yeah, so what we found for uh, excellent employees would be initiative, uh, self-motivation, passion, and a willingness to learn new skills. Those sound great. That sounds like the perfect team that any one of us would want to work with, doesn't it? <laughs> now, of course, it's always harder than it sounds, but at least we've got that part down. <laughs> Easier right. said than done, but... <laughs> right. Sure. But knowing those basics lets us develop those. Do each of you have a favorite management or leadership book and why? Yeah, I think, well, I guess one thing we must confess to is that Ashley was a student of mine in management, so I think we have, we have the same uh, two books. So I'll I'll start with, uh, I'll let Ashley start with, with the first one. Yes, yeah, so I wouldn't be a, a proper student in Dr. Child's leadership class if I didn't mention 
uh, First Break All the Rules by Marcus Buckingham and Kurt Kaufman in collaboration with Gallup Press. So these authors, they, they give really great examples about how top managers improve employee satisfaction and uh, increase employee motivation. Uh, they provide what they call a measuring stick uh, of 12 questions that can measure the strength of the workplace. So questions like, do employees know what's expected of them at work? Um, so which is just really great stuff to know. Um, they also provide some insights like selecting for talent, how to define the right outcomes, and uh, encourages managers to focus on employee strengths. So. Yeah, I, I also wanted to say that one of the reasons why that's a required reading is because it, it was done by the Gallup organization. The sample size was 80,000. Uh, and, uh, again, uh, it's not someone's opinion, but rather a response to uh, a, a strong data set uh, and really coming straight from what they would call the, the best, the world's best leaders and managers. Data-driven. Yep, data-driven, exactly. Um and for me, raving fans. So raving fans, uh, not everyone likes raving fans. It is a bit dated, uh, 1993, uh, but it was uh, kind of an allegory written by Blanchard and Bowles that is kind of also required reading in a lot of leadership and management programs. Uh, and raving fans really looks at uh, the three secrets. Uh, and again, although it's a bit formulaic, as you know, Adrian, leadership and management is very difficult. And so we really view uh, the 12 questions that you can take from first break, all the rules, and then the three secrets from raving fans is at least a decent formula that's always kind of serve as a check and balance to see how you're doing. So the three questions are uh, 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 setting an ideal vision. Uh, the second question is uh, uh, reaching out to uh, or discover what your customer wants. Uh, and then the third question is uh, uh, delivering plus one. And so really those three are critical on any good leadership and management because ideally you set the ideal vision, know where you're going, what's your secret one, uh, you customize it based on valid data from the people you're trying to serve, uh, and then and then uh, secret three is critical because it's deliver plus one, and basically what they mean by that is you must deliver deliver only what you can do consistently and, and with excellence, and then the plus one is grow and and uh, very uh, very slowly so that you can always achieve that balance. Understanding that uh, very frequently when we try to um, be exemplary to our patrons and customers, we overextend ourselves and ultimately not not deliver on any of it. Thank you for those recommendations. And it sounds like books like these can help us fill in our outline of what the ideal qualities are once we know that. We can draw upon resources to fill in the blanks about what that looks like. I really like that. Absolutely. So in closing, what do libraries mean to each of you personally? So working in a library, in any library really, um, it's just a very compassionate field filled with very kind people who, who make it their mission to help others. Uh, so having just completed my Master's in Library and Information Studies, I just feel really honored to be welcomed into this community and to have a career that feels like a calling rather than just a job. So I guess libraries, for me, it's definitely a calling. That's great, Ashley. And I'll say that I have a continued love of Sheriff Libraries. So I remember fondly uh, going to libraries all my life when I was a child, spending a lot of time there, uh, doing all sorts of things. I'm obviously, think very fondly of it as a... Uh, when I was pursuing my PhD and all of the time I spent in the academic library. And then finally, uh, my children. So I have three children, my youngest who's 17 now, and, and the relationship we have with our public library was just phenomenal. I think a lot of people misconstrue sometimes that uh, people that can afford to buy books just buy books and don't go to the library, and that's completely not true. I would buy two books from Barnes & Nobles, and then I would check out 40 books each, uh, for my children to, to just uh, go get lost in, in a whole new world uh, and completely for free. So, uh, and then last thing I'll say is, so I'm on the committee of uh, library advocacy for ALA. The the role that public libraries serve in terms of equal, equalizing the playing field and serving all of those uh, people that need us uh, is just uh, it's really one of the best uh, organizations in our communities. And so. Uh, it's a real, as Assy said, it's a real privilege to teach people like her, who's the future of our field, 
But more importantly, I really feel that the strength of our library is really will define the strength of our communities. And so we, we've got to keep, keep fighting the good fight as, as I think, unfortunately, many decision makers have that Google bias, uh, internet bias, and we just need to keep supporting libraries uh, and recognizing that their role in society, in many ways, is even more important as we go as we go more and more digital access. Thank you for those thoughts, and thank you for being on the show with me today. Thank, thank you so you, much for Adrian. having us. Yeah, we really appreciate the opportunity again, and it's been a privilege getting to know you and, and talking to you about all these findings. Likewise, thanks again. You've been listening to Library Leadership Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Herrick Juarez. Our producer is Nate Vineyard. More episodes can be found at libraryleadershippodcast.com, where you can now subscribe to have new shows delivered right into your email inbox. You can also find the show on Apple iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.